Do you think the same problems or the same thing is going to be an issue if you were in a, a defined contribution plan and you know it was halfsies, say, you know, the employee's putting in this, the employer's putting in that. Isn't the employer, the state, the city, the county going to play with its contribution? And if they do, I'm just, I'm just asking, if they do, does that transfer what's now an obligation for taxpayers to the employees who would be on the defined contribution plan? Aren't you just moving the liability? So I, I think what all of us on this stage are alluding to is the fact that defined benefit plans are subject to political calculation. And that's one of the major structural weaknesses of this type of plan. There's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, call it fuzzy math, tinkering, you know, whatever you want to call it. There's, these plans are not absent uh, political considerations. And so, but, but uh, with, isn't that also true of the contribution plans? Well, so with the contribution plan, you're actually, uh, you have a legal claim on the contribution itself. If your employer doesn't deposit a contribution into your individual account, then you have a legal claim. There's right? no difference. So, the, well, it, so on the defined benefit plan, though, what we're saying right now is we have $57 billion in unfunded liabilities. These are effectively broken promises that we're either going to have to make up in the future with higher taxes, fewer benefits, or some combination of both. Eventually, this is going to have to be dealt with. No, the city, the, those plans in, in, in Houston could have taken the city to court, and they would have won. They could have made them, they could have made them ante up. But, but let me back up a step, just because uh, I want to understand this. If you're in a defined contribution plan, I put in 10 bucks, my employer puts in 10 bucks. My mm -hmm. employer's the state, they get in a budget pinch, and they decide that year they're going to put in nine bucks. If they change the law to say nine bucks, what am I suing them about? Well, so you, you have a legal claim on the contribution, but not the benefit, right? So, un yeah, un but, but the, the guy who's making the other half of the contribution controls the law that says what the contribution's gonna be. Well, and that's, that's a decision that you make as an employee uh, along with your employer, right? That's an individual burden that, that everyone must make. And by the way, this isn't, this isn't something that's completely uh, unknown to us. A majority of the private sector is already in defined contribution style plans. You have about 60% of the private sector operating under this system. So there, there's a lot of, of security and, and knowns in the realm of DCs. But you don't agree that the, that the state or the, the government on the employer side of this thing could change its contribution regardless of what I thought they were going to do. So I put in $10, they put in $10, and they say, we're in a budget pinch. I'm just asking if that's not a risk of D.C. Uh, I think that there's less of a risk with the D.C. operating system than there is with the D.B. plans, mm -hmm. because right now the D.B. plans, we're making promises that we don't have money for. Um, and again, a lot of this is operating under some very fuzzy math that we're assuming, you know, these plans are going to hit 7 8% year over year, and when that doesn't happen, that tends to accumulate uh, on the unfunded liability side, uh, further exacerbating the problems. And by the way, actually, I think contributes to one of the problems that David alluded to with these alternative investments. A lot of the plans in order to hit these high 8% uh, marks are shifting invest investment strategies to, uh, to see their gains uh, increase, right? But with these ris risky investment strategies, we're also becoming more susceptible to market disruption. Uh, and it's my personal belief that we're actually uh, on the verge of a market correction, and you know, who, who knows where that leads us in terms of, of pensions, but uh, it, it's a very risky strategy. Jane. Sir? You're a smart guy. I know you are. <laughs> and going back, you really can't fully that in terms of the, the risk on a DC versus DB is absolutely the same. Uh, because they can quit. The employer can quit making the contributions. In a, in a corporation, as they run in trouble in their sales or whatever, and they, they, they're going to quit contributing. They go, the, the city does it. In the city of Houston, if you look historically with the city of Houston, uh, they, they've changed plans multiple times under different mayors. Uh, when I came in, all I had was a DC. If you're looking at my retirement <coughs> was there, and I, for all practical purposes, it was, it was a DB plan, but only the city was contributing, I wasn't contributing. Uh, before that, it was both sides contributing. After I left, and like now, it's both sides contributing. And so it's however you structure it. And you can structure it to make it work. And, and, that, and the whole point we're trying to make is that 
you can structure it and you can structure it properly and the two sides can get together and come to an agreement. You go to the legislature, you put it in law, and then it's, very, it's more difficult to change it. You, you structure it, put it in a law, and, and you try and make it work from that way. But just, just a DC alone, is, it's just, it's, it's not, it's not going to work. 